When I had COVID-19, the only symptom I had was a headache. I think about three weeks after I was or tested positive for COVID, I started having heart palpitations. I would call my GP again and let her know, and she was like, oh, well, you probably have long COVID then. I started feeling tired a lot, like really tired. It was to the point where I really couldn't even get out of bed some days. Like, I'd wanna like speak in class or something, and I'd know what I wanted to say, but then as soon as I, like, it just wouldn't come out. Long COVID is a term that has actually been coined by patients who were finding that some of them were not getting better. They recovered from the acute COVID, but were still getting a lot of persistent symptoms. It's really important to understand the long-term consequences of infection with the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID-19. It's a new disease and we don't really know much about what will happen in the longer term. We're taking advantage of the two million or more people that have taken part in REACT1 and REACT2. We set up the Long COVID programme, which we call REACT-LC. We're trying to measure the experience of people with Long COVID and who've not got Long COVID, or people that have, have recovered, and try and understand those patterns. We're doing that both with a small number of people who we're interviewing in depth, a qualitative study, but also in larger numbers who we're sending out a survey to ask about their symptoms. Secondly, we're bringing people up for biological testing and clinical testing to test their functionality, their lung capacity, etc. We will do basic measurements. I will check your height, your weight, and on the end we will do a sit and stand test. We really value the input we're getting from patients into both the design of the study but also sharing their stories so we can really understand what this new condition and the range of experiences that they have. Yeah, that's great, you're doing very good. People are still suffering from, you know, the infections they've had for quite, quite significant periods in, in the past. So this appears, this to me is just, a, it's the next phase of those, those surveys and again, it's, it's something you can do to help understand that. So at the moment, we don't have any specific treatments for long COVID in contrast to COVID-19, where we've seen a huge number of treatments evaluated, a number of which offer benefit. So if we can understand the particular biological mechanisms, whether that's inflammation or whether that's the virus still replicating, that will allow us to target specific treatments to that. We are working with Genomics England as a partner to help us obtain whole genome sequencing on the 10,000 people that, that we brought into the clinic and taken blood. If we take the insights and convert them into new biology, then we can use that biology potentially either to invent new therapies or discover existing therapeutic targets, and therefore we could incept a much better outcome for people with long COVID. We're working with experts from other universities and other locations, not only in the UK, but also abroad, by doing a, what we call a multi-omic analysis, we're really trying to unravel the biological pathways that may underlie once, why some people go on to get severe illness or persistent symptoms and others don't. We know that COVID is likely to be with us for many years to come and clearly that also means that long COVID may be around for many years to come. And that means both understanding how best to approach their diagnosis and treatment, but also how we set up services, how we configure the NHS to help deal with that. We plan to follow up some of the people with long COVID and some without, in fact, to find out what happens over the months and years ahead. Globally, not just in the UK, we're facing quite a big challenge of growing numbers of people with these kind of disabilities. In this study, we're trying to understand those better, but really to listen to those patients and to understand exactly how it's affecting their daily lives. I hope that this study can show the long-lasting impact that COVID has on people and that there's a reason why they feel bad. What we were able to do through the REACT program is give in near real time absolute information on the ground about what was happening to the virus. And that sort of situational awareness at the population level is extremely valuable. This virus is not going away. We now know how to monitor that virus at scale, uh, both from the virus's point of view, from REACT1 with the swabs, but also from the population immunity point of view with the antibody tests. And I think those kinds of tests will carry on now for, for years to come. It's been 
the most intense year and a half of work for many of us. I hope that that will then be embodied in the way that we address future challenges. We shouldn't kid ourselves that uh, we're out of the woods on this just yet. And so the studies remain important to try and understand the dynamics of endemicity and the dynamics of the change, particularly as it relates also to um, variant evolution of the virus. So there's a lot more to be done. To be part of this huge study with the power of people who can analyse data at scale and this fast, I think has been a real honour and a privilege actually.